What's going on YouTube, Chamber Productions coming back at you with another video. In today's video, I'll be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series number 38, also known as the Transformers Bumblebee Movie Voyager Class Optimus Prime. Now setting the figure off to the side, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the box. And here we have a picture of Optimus. And this is by far my favorite movie verse version of Optimus. It beats the night version. It's just it's just so G1 aesthetic and it's so nice. Um, on the other side we got Studio Series number 38 and then we got a picture of Optimus there on the side. Coming around to the other side here, we got a picture of Optimus Prime and the uh, little clear spot where the Autobot symbol rests, but that's on the uh, display, display backdrop, which I'll get into here in a second. Uh, coming around to the back of the box, here we have a picture of Optimus in his robot mode. His vehicle mode that he transforms in 35 steps. Whew, that's a lot of steps. Um, and then we have a picture of Rampage down at the bottom. And then at the top, it just is, says it's from Transformers Bumblebee the movie. And then at the bottom, you just get all that stuff. Uh, yeah, just copyright stuff like that. Um, and then here's the backdrop that he comes with. As you can see, it's the San Francisco bridge scene. Um, and yeah, he does come with one accessory. That being his iconic blaster which he did use this um, on the some of the Cybertron scenes on in the movie, and this looks just about spot on to how it looks in the movie. I mean, it's just so nicely molded and detailed. And it just looks really, really good. And then he comes with his instruction booklet, and here we have Optimus, and man, whenever in hand images were starting to be released i was dying for this figure to come out i just could not wait now the only problem is is that i was waiting for him to come out on amazon that just i'm not even going to get into that story we'll just say it was delayed for a little while but nonetheless here's the figure and he is just amazing He's not perfect, mind you. He does have a few loose joints in the robot mode, which I'll get into in a little bit. But just the details and the just the amount of details and paint they put into this figure. You got some nice silver paint going along the side here and on the grill and on the headlights. And uh, you got some nice silver hubcaps. These are pinned on wheels, which we... It's kind of rare if you get a pinned on wheel on a Transformer nowadays. Um... But yeah, and then you got some nice metallic painting going on there at the uh, trailer hitch. And it's just a nice alternate mode. Now, you can store his gun in this mode. You just plug it into the trailer hitch, which I'm not going to do because it looks ridiculous for one. I mean, Optimus isn't going to drive around with a gun hanging off the trailer hitch. And for two, it's just, I don't know, it just looks weird. You can display the figure on the stand, but... As usual, it doesn't really have that kind of room on there to make him look like he's driving. Um, for size comparisons, here we have him next to the Studio Series Bumblebee, which uh, this is from the Bumblebee movie, um, which is okay in scale. I think he should be a little bit smaller. We never really got to see Optimus and Bumblebee in their original alternate modes because, spoiler alert, Bumblebee picks up a Camaro form at the end of the movie so that's when we see Optimus and Bumblebee side by side so we never got to see them uh, side by side in their original alternate modes excuse me um, <laughs> can't speak uh, here we have them next to the um, studio series um, Revenge of the Fallen Optimus Prime and as you can see he is shorter in terms of height but he's longer because of the front of the truck and then here we have the G1 reissue of Optimus Prime, which is just a lot of G1 goodness going on here. Let me back it up. There we go. Just a lot of G1 goodness going on here. And as you can see, there's a huge G1 reference going on. So, yeah. The transformation in the robot mode is, oh, it's a lot. Especially when you're trying to get your camera to focus. There we go, uh, especially whenever you're going off the instruction booklet. But uh, once you get the hang of it, it's definitely a cool transformation. So what you're going to do is start by unpegging this back section here and sort of just lifting it up and untabbing it out of the way and just have it there like that. 
And then what you're going to do is come around to the front here and take the bumper and you're just gonna pull that down and it just untabs from the front section. After you do that, that'll allow you to fold down these side panels here and you can fold those down and fold them up and they sort of just, they just sort of sit there like so. Then after you do that, you take these panels here and fold them onto the wheel well. Just like so, I'll show that again. So you just collapse it onto the wheel well. Then after that, you can go ahead and pull out, well, I keep forgetting to do this, but you take these little panels here that go on the side of the truck and fold them up and over. And it sort of creates a filling for these spaces here, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Then you can take the hands and rotate them out and rotate them forward, which in my opinion, huge reference to how the original G1 Optimus transformed. And I absolutely love it. Then you can come back to the legs here. Um, and what you're going to do is, I actually didn't notice this till I was fiddling with the figure, but you take this panel, I'm trying to show it to y'all. You take it and you fold it down and this will create, this will expose, I should say, expose more detail on the inside of the legs. So whenever we get the legs transformed, there's a lot more detail and mechanical bits going on. You just gotta sort of make sure you're opening it in the right way would help as well. And sometimes it does pop off. It's just on a very loose little um, hinge and it snaps right back on so no big deal then you can come around to the legs separate them and take the foot and fold it around and rotate the foot and then hinge it down then you can come to the back of the leg here fold this section down just like so fold it down and this will slide this piece will slide right into that tab right there just like so. And then you can take the gas canister and fold it into the thigh. That is genius. Like, the fact that they figured out a way, you know, I'll get into that later. Then you take this section here, this little section, and you fold it up, and that'll lock that canister into place. Then you can fold the shin down, just like so. And there are tabs that it will tab into right there. And you'll see it'll tab into place. Just like so. Then you're going to repeat the same process on the other leg. So you're just going to take that. You're going to take the trailer hitch, fold that up, and then you're just going to repeat the same exact process on this side. So I'm just going to sort of just go through it really quickly because this transformation is like ridiculously long, um, especially when you're trying to show it off on camera. There we go. Then after you do that, um, you can come to the wheel wells here, and I believe you can fold those out of the way for right now. And then, here comes the uh, tricky s part. You got to take these sections here and fold them out, and then you got to untab the head from the body. Now, the hard part is trying to get enough clearance to rotate this entire section around without anything getting caught up. So you rotate this all around and then you take this section right here fold it up and around and then you take the head and fold it up and then you can take these silver panels right here that went on the windscreens fold them up and then just fold that up and straighten everything out then you come around to the back here and you fold this section down so the hinge is hanging towards his butt. That's the first time I've ever had to say that on a review. Um, then you take the wheel wells and fold them up and then that will tab, this will all tab together in the back and you'll hear it snap into place just like so. Then you just um, take the forearms here, rotate them, tab them into place. Rotate and then you take the panel, this panel here, and tab that into his arm. And after all that fiddling, check over everything, make sure everything's securely tabbed into place. I'd say so. Here we have the Transformers Studio Series Voyager Class Optimus Prime in his robot mode. And oh my goodness, after that whole transformation, the whole transformation is really worth it. 
because this robot mode is just spot on. It is by far my favorite Prime figure from the Studio Series line thus far. Oh my word. The attention to detail, the sculpting, and the paint just is amazing. Now, I'm not saying he's a perfect figure because I'm about to go over a few issues I have with this figure. But going ahead and taking a look at some of the details. As you can see, the shins are beautifully detailed and painted. The feet are a little bit on the weird looking side, but the feet are not the main reason for this figure. Um... You got some nice paint details on the inside of the knees right there. And then you got some nice uh, paint right here. Um, and then you get into the abdomen section here, which has some nice molded in detail and paint. And then you get to the chest. The chest is really cool looking. Um, nice G1 reference here. And whenever I do the comparison in between the two, you'll see what I'm talking about. And then the head sculpt is amazing like truly spot on head sculpt you got some nice molded in detail on the arms here you got some nice silver paint going on the side of the arms and it's just a good figure in general in the backpack section here they've actually found a way to make it accurate to how it was in the movie it just it just blows me away um, you can store the gun in this mode. There are two tabs on the side of the gun, uh, and then there's two tab holes on his back, which allow you to store the gun just like so, and it stores away quite nicely. Just overall, this is an astonishing figure, and the fact that they put this much time and in ingenuity into this um, um, figure, ingenuity, sorry, or however you say it, I'm just blown away by this figure. It's just an amazing figure. I cannot now... It's not perfect. Don't get me wrong. He does have a few issues, which I'm about to get into. His articulation is pretty good. He has a rotation in the arm. can go outward at the arm if you move the shoulder pads out the way, in which they do actually move out specifically for the articulation. His head is on a ball joint, so he can look up. Make sure my camera's focused. He can look up, down, left, and right, and I'm pretty sure he can go on 360. Um, does have a swivel in the arm, which is 360 uh, bend at the elbow, which this is really cool how they're able to engineer that because he has this like circular design in his elbow, and they still find a way to work around that. Still blows my mind. Um, his hands are on a 360 rotation swivel. Waist is on a 360 swivel, which is pretty insane. Um, legs can kick forward that far, can kick backwards, not too far due to the backpack kibble. Um, he can bend um, over 90 degrees at the knee, has a thigh swivel, can kick, excuse me, can kick out pretty far. Uh, he has this hip skirt, which allows him to kick out. And he has ankle swivel now he does have a little bit of looseness in the in and out leg motion here as you can see it's really just loose and in my opinion that's kind of unacceptable at this point it's 2019 we shouldn't be having these problems on figures like this after all studio series voyager class figures can range to about 30 dollars especially this figure right here um so in my opinion that's kind of unacceptable at 2019 we should not be having these problems on a figure like this but it's still just an amazing figure, and I, I'm happy with them all in all. For size comparisons, here he is next to Studio Series Deluxe Class Bumblebee. And in my opinion, he's, he stands pretty accurately with Bumblebee because Bumblebee was about half his height in the film. Studio Series Voyager Class Revenge of the Fallen Optimus Prime. Which is actually a smidge shorter, just a little bit shorter than uh, the new Optimus. And then for Optimus's ancestor, G1 Prime. As you can see, there's a lot of G1 references going on here. Uh, you got the silver paint going on the side of the arms, and it's just... Just this new Optimus is so refreshing to see in the live-action films, and I'm hoping he does make another appearance in the live-action films. But guys, that's all for this video.
But guys, that's all for this video. I really, really highly recommend, if you're an Optimus Prime fan or just a Transformer person in general, you pick this figure up. Yeah, he has some loose joints, which, like I said, is, in my opinion, unacceptable at this point in time. But other than that, he's an amazing figure, and it's just awesome. And I really do think that he deserves a spot in any Transformer fan's collection. But, guys, that's all for me. I hope you all enjoyed. If so, be sure to click like, comment what you think of Optimus in the comment section below. And be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss a video from my channel. That's all for me. Champion Productions, signing off.